Hello, welcome everybody to this Fronius webinar today. Topic is cost-effective charging without PV system. So we would like to introduce you our solution with Smart Meter IP and the Wattpilot to charge the EV. My name is Hans Pelzer. I will guide you through this presentation, which will take about 20 minutes. And we'll have also Christoph Schilling in our chat. He will answer your questions during the presentations. Feel free to send your questions and we will answer them immediately. Uh, what uh, is on the agenda today? I would like to start with uh, just uh, the requirements of EV customers. So customers without a PV system, what are they asking for? Then uh, I would like to show you the solutions from Fronius. In this case, uh, what components are needed? And uh, finally, the commissioning and the short summary. So we have actually three uh, three different cases uh, seen uh, when we talk about residential customer with our PV system. He would like to charge his car, of course, with low electricity cost. And this is possible when the customer is using flexible energy tariffs and using uh, our solutions. Second, the customer who needs uh, several charging stations, but uh, there's no chance to, to change the electrical supply cables. So therefore, it's also good to have the feature of the Wattpilot, so-called load balancing feature. And this is uh, gives the advantage to uh, limit the power stations according to the maximum supply cable. Third, a commercial customer would like to reduce peak loads. That's also possible uh, with load balancing and priority charging. So I would like to show you now the solutions. Basically, first, uh, charging with flexible tariffs. What do you uh, need in this case? Well, we have our smart meter IP from the smart meter IP at the feeding point, so right after the energy meter. Uh, this is connected via LAN or Wi-Fi to the network, and also the bat pilot in the in uh, in the house is connected to the same network uh, via Wi-Fi. Then uh, the uh, the bat pilot will get the information and will start charging according to uh, the power which is possible to be charged as well as to get the low uh, variable uh, spot market prices from the electricity cost and charge according to that. Especially the next trip mode is uh, a very good mode which gives you a customer the possibility to charge a certain amount every day uh, with lowest price when he's using flexible energy tariffs. So what only thing what you need to do is you set in the Wattpilot app the threshold. So at what uh, per, what uh, actually electri electricity price level the Wattpilot should start charging. You see here the flexible energy tariff. So we have different uh, tariffs uh, included in the Wattpilot. You can select that according to your country. And then you see here, for example, uh, when the threshold is set to zero, whenever the price is below zero, uh, we will start charging. So in this example, from one o'clock to four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning, we will charge our electric car with this low price. So that's, I think, already well known. Uh, when the customer would like to add a PV system later on, that's quite easy. You just need to uh, connect a uh, Inverter Gen 24 in this example with your PV system. You can use the same smart meter, same watt per lot, same uh, uh, wiring. You just need uh, to uh, do some different settings on the inverter web interface that this is your smart meter, that this is your watt per lot, uh, which is connected. So that's a quite easy, simple way to do that. Then. For the second solution, the customer with uh, several EV chargers, of course, there is importance that uh, the supply cables can be overloaded. Therefore, well, we have this load balancing feature, which is ex explained here. So we have a smart meter IP. Uh, we have a 25 amp maximum from the uh, from the grid side, and we split up the 25 now to 10 amps, uh, which we need for our loads, and the rest, the 15 amps goes to these two watt pilot and will be shared 
on both at a 50-50 level, at 7.5 M, for example. So therefore, the, there's no, uh, uh, no uh, overload on the grid connection and you have uh, you can use the charging process accordingly. When the load will be switched off, you can charge it again with 25 amps and you, you can use the full power again. So this is uh, requires only the load balancing uh, functionality, which is implemented in the smart meter IP. So you start with this uh, combination, same communication via Wi-Fi or LAN to the smart meter IP and the watt per load will also be uh, connected to the same network via Wi-Fi, then uh, the communication can be, the settings can be done. The third solution uh, is how to avoid peak load and, and to, uh, how to uh, give priorities. Here, same example with the company, for example, we have five charging stations. Uh, we have a maximum uh, current on the feeding point of 63 amp. Uh, or from this cable to the to, to the uh, charging stations, maybe is a, a fuse with 63 amp. And now we limit uh, or we share this uh, power to the to the watt per load accordingly. And in this case, we have a priority that charging station one is uh, most important. So this is the, for example, this is a uh, sales rep who needs to go every day uh, to the customer. Uh, he will get the full power always when it's connected and the other ones will get uh, the limited current of only 7 amps, for example. So in this case, we can share uh, that and also the company can avoid peak loads. There will be never higher power than this 63 amp and uh, also it's shared according to, to the needs of the specific customers or specific EV uh, owners. So same settings also with the load balancing. I will show you that later on. Before that, I would like to show you what components are required. So the smart meter IP, there is only one available. available. On the smart meter IP, you have the possibility to connect uh, CTs, uh, the CTV version, 333 millivolt output per phase. So you need three in a three phase system, of course. You need the frontiers watt per lot or more whatever car charging stations you need and finally you're later on compatible with all frontiers inverters so the, the new ones the gen 24 the snap inverters or the beato range for example also the tower of course uh, so this would also be uh, possible to be included the frontiers watt per lot comes in two versions the home and the go version so 11 kilowatt or 22 kilowatt. Most of the time in a residential building, you're using the 11 kilowatt. Uh, in the company build, companies, you can also use the 22 amp version. So uh, that's uh, I think already well known. There's more uh, detailed explanation about the product on YouTube. So please watch these videos. The wiring diagrams are as follows. So the smart meter IP has to be connected after, right after the energy meter. Maybe there's a fuse then in between. And then you have the CTs, uh, which you connect uh, in uh, on phase one, two, and three. And uh, there's also a supply line going from L1, L2, L3, and neutral uh, via 20 amp fuse or smaller than 20 amp fuse uh, to the smart meter, to the smart meter supply. And then you have on the smart meter IP uh, the possibility to connect uh, Ethernet cable or also to connect uh, or to connect via Wi-Fi. So how to do that, I will explain on the next slide. And then uh, of course to the uh, to the watt per lot, to the e-mobility charging stations, you need uh, RCD to type A and the fusing. Also, the watt per lot also need to be integrated in the same network, then, of course. So now we come to the commissioning. On the smart meter IP, you first uh, press the button when you've started the uh, system two seconds, then uh, the access point will be opened. You connect your smart device. Uh, we are, for example, we're using the Solar Start app. You can scan the QR code, enter the password one, two, three, 
then you follow just the instructions to do the settings, the CT settings, and also the settings uh, of the smart meter. And uh, then you finally are connected. We'll get an IP address, uh, and this can be uh, seen then and also be uh, noted down because this can be used then in the Wattpilot to see if this is uh, the same one. So, um, also there's here a QR code for the auto video. Now, uh, what settings has to be done in the Solar Watt Pilot app on the Watt Pilot when you have uh, already done the commissioning? After commissioning, uh, you can uh, go to the point co uh, settings cost optimization, and then you will find the use flexible energy tariffs. You can select then the country, this example Denmark, and the zone, and the echo mode threshold, so at what uh, level the car should charge. In this case, we have zero cent. Of course, this should be, uh, uh, of course, can be, of course, higher to make sure that the customer also can use uh, more often the charging. Um, then uh, down below, you see also the uh, inverter or smart meter IP serial number. So when uh, the smart meter IP is connected, you will see smart meter IP and serial number. So this should be uh, coupled and this should be uh, uh, seen here. The serial number of the smart meter IP should be seen here. Otherwise, you need to connect uh, again and couple these two again. Automatic, usually it works automatically. Uh, there's also how to video available, how to do that. Uh, so feel free to watch this video to see uh, the detailed settings of the solar watt pilot app. Then uh, when we uh, have using the watt the load balancing feature, so we have several uh, watt plot, for example, we go under settings to the point load balancing, and set uh, the load balancing on, the dynamic load balancing, what we have here, and we set a maximum delivery current. So this is, the, for example, the feeding point, 35 amp, and we can also set here a priority for this uh, one as to high, medium, or low priority. Fallback mode would also be possible so whenever the, the communication stops, the network communication interrupts, that you have a, also a kind of limitation here that you avoid also an overload in this case. So these are the settings you should do. Should do. And then uh, the, you save the settings and the uh, load balancing feature will be implemented, of course, in all the watt pilots. Good, that's that's it actually. So finally, for the summary, uh, EV charging without PV is a good solution because you can use flexible energy tariffs. So it's really, uh, I think in many countries, a real need to do that uh, even without PV you profit from the low energy tariffs. Uh, you can avoid overload with the load balancing feature. Uh, so this is integrated as standard in every watt per load. You just need to activate it. Uh, you can also avoid peak loads, of course, which is important for many companies. Whenever they have a few electric cars, that they avoid that. And uh, also here, you need to set the load balancing and the priorities because maybe some customers or some cars need to be charged with higher power or more uh, urgent than the others. And therefore, you can do that. Uh, it's a future-proof system because you can add the PV system whenever you want, later on in a few years, uh, and it's also integrated. And so you also benefit from the PV system, uh, in this case that you can charge probably a bit higher power because you have additional production. We don't need to consume that from the grid. And secondly, of course, the energy price will then be lowered again because your PV price, electricity price, feeding price is usually lower. And that's uh, also good here to use that then. You can also add external power sources. So when you have an external power source, as a windmill or another uh, hydropower station, a small hydropower station, you can also integrate that. So you just need to smart meter IP and the watt pilot, uh, and you can do that already.
so it works with any also any other solar inverter so you can also use here different other uh, brands and again what's needed the watt per load smart meter ip and three cts 333 millivolts you can you get that all from fronius that uh, can be delivered here from fronius good i think that's it for the moment we have further information for you. Uh, the recording will be forwarded in the next days. You will uh, can find more info on the bat pilot on this QR code uh, here, bat pilot info uh, or smart meter IP information on our webpage. Uh, trainings will be offered as well as online trainings. Uh, we have offering all the solutions as well in the installation training and in the immobility e training and different other webinars to this topic. Feel free to watch also our how-to videos, uh, what I've shown you in this presentation. So there are there's a how-to video about the Smart Meter IP commissioning and one about the Watt per lot commissioning included. Good, that's it for the moment. I, I will see uh, there are no questions at the moment, but uh, we will uh, stay online with you, answer your questions within the next minutes, feel free to send your questions. And therefore I would say thank you very much for your participation and goodbye, see you next time here at our webinars. Bye-bye.